What's up? So, on this video where I was doing the spindles, I have an 86, so I can switch it over to the disc brakes, I ran into my first problem. So, I, dummy me, was thinking 86 spindles and the control arms, you, I know you could use the same ones from the 70. So, I just figured I'd just get new 70 ball joints. Well, I guess what I hadn't read enough details that the 70s, well, yeah, the 67 to 70s ball joints will not work. But you can use the 73 to 87 or 86 ball joints and they'll work on the same uppers and lower control. So these are the ones I had put in that are from a 67 to 70. And then there's the 73 to 86. You can see the height difference. That's where I was running into. I couldn't get the spindle to go down low enough to get threaded. I can get it threaded, but I didn't really get no torque on it or get any threads to come down. So I guess you need that longer shaft, of course, for the spindles. So that's just one of the problems. So just a heads up on that one. <laughs> if you're going to do, you're to keep your old control arms, like I did mine, I kept them, kept them, clean them and all that, and then put the wrong ball joints in. No big deal. Rock Auto, I got the Moog, Moog M-O-O-G. I got those for, I think 16 bucks a piece. So, no big deal, my bad. <laughs> so I went ahead and bought the uppers and the lowers because the uppers are gonna be the same way. They're a little longer on the uppers as well. So, uppers and lowers from the 73 to 87 or 86. I can't remember, but anyways, that's just a heads up. And now I'll do some more in the video. So on my last video that I recorded, I was showing you guys how the ball joints were not gonna work. So this video, I'm gonna run through some other stuff that I ran into. Not a lot of details online. There's not a lot you can find anything out on really one big detail. So I kind of just got things parts and pieces here and there. Nobody really went to detail explaining anything. That was, I could not find out how to tell if the stock spindles were inch and a quarter or inch. They didn't have no details on the measurements of the, of the spindle exactly. So what I come to find out is the ones that I bought that the guy said were inch and a quarter uh, disc brakes was not inch and a quarter disc brakes. Has to be the inch ones because it did, they didn't work. They, the nut went on and it just left like a little tiny little bit of room. It wasn't no room for the nut to go all the way on and use the, the pin lock there, the cotter pin. So here's the two different ones side by side. So there's the one I was reusing, thought they were the right ones. And it measured out exactly right at four inches. Okay, so I got the new ones right here and they measure out to be four and like almost a half, four and a half. So that half inch is the difference. So four inch, four and a half. So your four and a half or your inch and a quarter. Also, what I didn't realize is, is the inch and a half or inch and a quarter disc brakes have a bigger spindle in the back versus this having a smaller spindle so i had to get i went ahead and ordered these off rock auto uh timkin timekin or something like that this is called a set three and then that was the front bearings and then this other one is a set five so the front of the bear, the front outer bearings are the same on both. So you can use a set three on either one of them, but the set five I needed for the backs. So an inch and a quarter disc brakes are bigger, so that works. Plus the calipers won't work. It's a bigger hole, smaller hole. So the difference there is I think they are the same bolt, bolt up just different gaps in the middle there. So you got a wide open hole and you got like a 
cut out. So the other issue I have is for your steering rod here, that old steering rod joint isn't the right one either from the stock 67 to 72, I think. So I had to order a new piece here for the outer rod and I got the 73 to 87 from Rock Auto as well. So I had to order this from Rock Auto and it's just a 73 to 87 outer tie rod. And so you can't just put that in there and go because it's going to be a different thread pattern in here, different size. So if you want to keep that stock there, you need to order off of CCP has tie rod, um, like a screw on lock. I ordered them. They're not here yet, but it has the threads that match the 7387 on one side. And then on the other side of the, the big old, uh, nut, it's about that long. It screws on this and on the other side. It allows you to screw on your inner tie rod right there. Yeah. It's all dirty. I need to clean it up and reduce it, but you know what I'm talking about? It's a, uh, I'm going to take that off, clean it all up. And I got to take a tape measure. I'll measure it and then lay it back down. And then that way I can take the new stuff, line it up and get that same measurement out on there. But, uh, that's my other issue. So that'll get me back to steering. So now that I got the right ball joints in there, I can now slide in the right spindles that need to go on there and then I can put on the inch and a quarter spin uh, disc brakes. So just a little recap here real quick. So the Timken bearings I got are American made. Okay, the front spindles, the front outer bearing bearings are all this pretty much the same no matter what brakes you use inner bearing is going to be the hd or heavy duty is what i believe they call them on that timekin timkin whatever the bearings are called you go with set five and each 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 different brand has their own set five or they call it arc one five or you know i don't know the different ones but it's usually the ones that are, says hd or heavy duty so heavy duty inner bearings is what you need for these spindles and then like i said ball joints which i've already told you about you need to do the ball joints from the 7387 on your factory on your stock uh control arms if you want to use your stock control arms and then your steering rod you can use the inner tie rod but the outer tie rod has to be converted to the 7387s and to get around that on ebay for 49 dollars, you can order that ccp it's like a big old aluminum nut thing and it and it allows you to use the threads of The inner tie rod of the 73 or the 67 to 72 and it allows you to use the outer tie rod threads for from the 73 to 87 to get it to go into spindles so that's where i'm at now it's just little details if you guys have any more questions about that i'm putting this together and i'm trying to get it all put together and i'm piecing it all to myself and there's really not a lot of detail out there online or videos or anything that I could find that you can part, piece and part your own disc brake setup on these trucks. So I hope that's that's enough information for somebody to get. Yeah, like I said, if you have any questions, hit me up on, me on the message or comments or something. I try to answer all my comments. Um, I'll give you the best information I can get. And like I said, I'm doing this all trial error. I've, I've read bits and pieces here and there. It's really hard to get one good. Everybody wants to buy a kit. Everybody wants to buy a kit. And I've gotten a lot of good deals on a lot of the stuff. The The spindle nuts are all the same too. The spindle washers are all the same. So I've, I've really ordered all my new small parts off Rock Auto. The control arms I've bought off individuals. I think I bought the inch ones that were the wrong ones. I bought those for, I think I got those for like 25 bucks. And then because those were the wrong, I went ahead and had to go back and order these other ones off somebody. And I got them for 50 bucks. 
So, yeah, I'm spending money here, spending money there. I mean, I don't think I'm spending nearly as much as what people are paying $2,000 for a complete disc brake swap. I think I paid 50 bucks for my booster and my master cylinder off of uh, 72. And I think the calipers I got for maybe 30 bucks a piece, maybe cheaper than that, I'm not positive. So, and then, I mean, if we start piecing together, I, I got the, the spindles are, aren't that bad a price. I wanted to keep stock spindles, spindle height. I didn't want to drop spindles, nothing like that. Cause my truck already sits like three inches from the ground. The headers sit three inches from the ground already with the spring. So I really didn't want to drop spindle and then have to buy a new spring. I may end up having to buy a new spring anyways after I put these spindles on. I just have to see what happens. I'm hoping next weekend I'm dropping that motor in there. I'm hoping. I finally got a weekend, long weekend off work. I'm hoping to get it dropped in there. She's about ready. I've got the heads bolted on and everything on her and she's ready to go. I'm going to prime the oil up in it today probably. So... That's a short little video, not very much. Uh, give me some likes and comments, guys. Like I said, if I can help you out, I wanna help you out. I enjoy making these videos to help people out. I hope people can get some information off of it that I couldn't find that I'm going through having to go through trial and error. So, like I said, if you got anything you wanna know, hit me up. See you guys, peace.